Uh, hello everyone, this is Pomon bringing you part 12 of my Fire Emblem 1 Let's Play. So yeah, this is the second and last part that we're going to do in this format uh, because as I said at the beginning of the previous one, uh, the recording failure lasted for one recording session which was uh, two chapters. I played the previous one with the Ballistician and this one, The Ageless Palace. Now, I have to say, about losing the previous one, I'm not, I'm not even that mad. I know that I've done it and edited and all that. I think it, it turned out pretty well. And, you know, in the end, it's something like uh, a fun thing to have in a display. But for this one to have been lost is pretty sad because a lot of things happen on the HLS Palace. So, first of all, we're going to begin with the introduction to the story. Nah. We can go without healing. We can't go without Gordon. Perfect. The HLS Palace. Uh... Oh, Katria. Bishop Boa, do you hear the confusion in the palace? Do you think something is afoot? Perhaps Princess Nina was able to recruit an army and has returned. But... You really think so? We might be saved. Perhaps, but the enemy won't let us go without a fight. And without our weapons. We're helpless. But this is the perfect chance to rid Arcania of its foes. I am willing to take that chance, no matter what ha what might happen to me. Your fighting spirit is so strong, my dear, but if you perished, Astram would surely weep. You're That's not Katria. That's not Katria, because Katria has absolutely nothing to do with Nina. Nina is her queen, Minerva is. Yes, I do wish I could see him once more before the end. Also, Astram, a name I'm not familiar with. But if I cannot, if that is your wish, Media. Okay, she's called Media. You must fight as hard as you can and never give up. So you don't have weapons? No items. A paladin. Okay, so after that, it was pretty clear to me what the chapter is about. You have to rescue these guys these guys on this on this area and it's it's a bit like uh, like it would happen with Lilina on on FE6 you kind of have to switch them around to avoid the archers and the mage none of them have weaponry no weaponry at all it's two armor knights called uh, Dolph and Magel and Maselan. Uh, this girl is a paladin called Media this one's a bishop called I don't remember. And this is an archer called Thomas, which is literally a Gordon recolor. Maybe not even a recolor, maybe just Gordon's portrait all over again. Because there's thieves in here, I was sure that I was going to start, you know, around here, because it's, it's pretty typical for you to start at the outside of the of the area you're going to invade, and also you have the the convoy near. But I actually as you can see here in the map, I start on these points. So that didn't go so well for me because I had a, some characters deployed just to take away their interesting weaponry. For example, I deployed uh, my bishop to take away his barrier stuff because that's pretty valuable and I, I didn't want to use him anymore because I now have both uh, Linda and Merrick on the mix. So I had to go all the way down and to the convoy to store that. I also had to do the same with uh, George, my archer, because I wanted to store my my good bows for Gordon to use, obviously. It is, however, a good, uh, a good thing because that also means it's much easier for me to stop these, these thieves, these two thieves. They were holding uh, good things. I think it might have been a Levin sword and a Rider's Bane, maybe even a stat booster. Uh, well, pretty insane, pretty insane. I, I don't remember exactly, but it was very, very good. 
Uh, there's also at some point between the previous chapter and this chapter a speedwing that I used on Marth. And that's when I discovered that the speedwings in this game, instead of giving you two to the to the speed stat, give you plus four. So Marth. I think I think already at this point Marth was like one of my speediest units and had the Raper. So I wanted to try him out and I basically put Marth here and try and take one of them with the you know effective damage from rapier and everything. Then here I have uh, one of my cavaliers. Maybe maybe I should yes. Oh. No, that's going to be too little. Like this, yeah. This way you can appreciate my drawings much better. One of my cavaliers in here, and another one of my cavaliers in here to defeat you. Uh, you have to remember here, I'm not using Jagen anymore, so my deployment slots were, you know, allowed me to bring other people like my bishop to store the barrier and all that. Still, this map didn't have a lot of deployment slots. I'm guessing that's because you get these units. Uh, not that they do a lot for you, but hey, uh, it still existed. So yeah, I took them out pretty easily, uh, got their drops, and thankfully I was able to get every chest in this map, I can already tell you, because they were pretty good. Uh, Marth actually took care of this guy easily, and this one actually survived against Mark Cavalier, so I had to go with another round from Marth. Uh, if Marth had finished his turn here, then now he went up, killed the armor, and then continued going on because, well, uh, I don't know, I just wanted him to kill this other armor because it's good experience for him. Still, the archers were a problem, so I had to approach slowly, you know, because, for example, this point is accessible by an archer to attack, but this one isn't, this one isn't, so by taking refuge in certain points, I, I was able to go there. And meanwhile, the archers and the mages continued attacking. I always had to expose at least uh, three of the people in this area, so I basically had them take turns. Uh, whenever one of them went so low on HP that they couldn't handle it anymore, they went to one of these two spaces which were completely safe. And I was even able to, uh, you know, reposition the archers a little bit to this side. I think they ended up in these two spots. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, go for rest, go for rest to explain that, yeah, this was the archers. One of them went here, the other one went here. And so these spaces were much more accessible by uh, one of my cavaliers that uh, just came running from here and killed and another one came running and killed and the armor was taken care of by Marth. A unit I had to deploy in this map, and this was very important, very, very, very important, was Julian. Julian, uh, please. They're important, but not that much. I deployed Julian, and obviously the reason was the large amount of chess. I've checked, by the way, and I now know that Marth can open chests. Marth can literally open any chest, but uh, he was a bit occupied, and you know, I have a lot of master keys, so there was really no point. And even though Marth can open uh, chests, he cannot open doors, so I still have that problem. While I had these people distract the enemies up there and, you know, open this and liberate them. Oh yeah, I now remember why I had to take Marth up here. Because Marth uh, had a door key. So I used the door key here to... No, I actually didn't even use it. I never, never opened this place. I never even used these characters because I thought it was a use for the door key. My, but my original plan was to take Marth all the way up and open this. Uh, however, some enemies, uh, if I remember correctly, it was these two mages. Had to be, had to be, so... Uh, sorry, yeah, there we are. These two mages basically started going all the way up, they were very aggressive. 
so I had to, you know, take some measures against them and so I had to take down all my cavaliers and all my people in Marth in the end didn't open this door and I, I didn't really care because these characters are not that interesting they seem to be like filler units in case all of your people die I think that's, you know, valuable in their own right but uh, not something I want to do because, you know, Thomas is like a substitute for Gordon so that's a no uh, so this guy no, then the armors, well, they are armors my cavaliers this girl basically had the worst stats than Jagen, Media, and at this point, if I wanted to use another cavalier, I think even Harding without ever promoting was going to be better, so no way. And well, this bishop, considering I was benching the bishop, so out of these five people, I never, you know, decided to use any of them. Um, I did deploy Media on the next chapter, but you will see why. Uh, it's something I noticed on preparations. So yeah, Julian was key, Julian had to advance, open this, then uh, then I have my two good mages here that were just prepared to take care of this guy. So they deleted this promoted armor and then went on to kind of block this place and, and clash against the mages that had already reached. So that way I was able to clear the enemies in here and I started opening chests. Some of the chests were very important. I already had a hero proof from the Minerva chapter. And one of the one of the chests contained uh, probably my, my most expected item for for a while. The Orion's Vault. Orion's Vault, in case you don't know is a promotion item and it serves only one purpose it can promote archers into snipers i actually checked and in this game you don't promote hunters into into horsemen uh, that's something that they actually added in <laughs> in the remakes or something like that but in this game in f1 pure f1 you can't promote hunters so actually prioritizing gordon over uh, Castor, I think that was the hunter's name, was a good idea because the Orion's Vault uh, is a promotion item that can basically only be used on either Gordon or, or this guy Tomás, that I decided was not going to be a thing. Huh? Oh yeah, there we go. I'm using different layers this time so that I can delete if I want, but yeah, it might be turning things a bit more confusing. Still, the Orion's Vault was around here, so of course I just had to uh, move Gordon, who I obviously deployed. Down here, then down here, and then he actually had to... Well, I had to bring one of my Cavaliers, which, you know, are very fast, so uh, they can reach basically anywhere in time if I if I put in enough effort so let's delete that to make things much much clearer I took my cavalier went all the way down all the way down all the way down and I battled this sniper this sniper was actually pretty strong silver bow but I finally was able to defeat it after like two rounds of combat and meanwhile, Marth and the other Cavalier, together with uh, my mages and everyone else that was good on battling, uh, battled against this mana kit. It was actually, you know, um, a decent bet to take on the mana kit because it was kind of dodgy against the magic I was using. And in the end, I, I think I had to do something strange like... Uh, Attacking from... I, I think I had to attack with with Abel, because Abel was able to do one or two damage, but it was kind of a, a bit too close for my, for my liking. Anyway, that meant that I defeated this guy, I defeated this guy, and these two, of course, as I said, went up. So that only left this boss, this is the boss, and the two healers. Now, I tried promoting Gordon, and Gordon wasn't able to promote, because he wasn't level 10 yet. So I thought, okay, it's a good opportunity to, you know, 
maybe attack the healers and take experience for them. So what I did was I had, uh, I think it was a combination of Fable and Linde going here and dispose of the boss. That was pretty easy, but instead of taking the throne immediately, what I did was uh, attacking the healers. Now the healers, uh, the healers had a heal and a ment, I think it was. And Gordon was able to do around, around what, like uh, seven times two to each of them. So that was good damage. But as you can realize, because this one was the heal, this one was the heal, and and this one was the men. I basically was because Gordon had come from the upper side. I was locked into attacking the left one. And the right one was able to heal uh, 20. That's what men heals. 20. And 20 is obviously more than 7 times 2. So even if Gordon was able to hit both of his, you know, arrow attacks, the other healer would recover uh, enough that uh, the, both of them keep on, on full health. Of course, at any point I was able to, you know, just kill the men healer with the people that had killed the boss and, and be done with it. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to because that was actually a bit of a grinding strategy. So I actually used it up. Uh, I, I actually took advantage of their AI to, you know, have them heal continuously and get Gordon to level 10. I don't really enjoy abusing uh, enemy AI to grind, but I think in this situation it was a bit justified because, you know, it's Gordon's promotion. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. I got Gordon to level 10 and that meant he was ready for promotion. But meanwhile, because, you know, I, I had to, you know, do something to keep my other people occupied, I had uh, Marth and two Cavaliers or something. Oh, and Julian, and Julian. Julian went here, opened this door, and then I have like Marth, Cavalier, Cavalier, take care of this group. Uh, there were two reasons for this. One of them was this chest. I obviously didn't want to miss on this chest. Probably the arrow should go the opposite way, but you know what I mean, right? The other one was this convoy. It was actually more useful for me. I wanted to store some things. Uh, a lot of people drop things in this map. I got like heal drops, menth drops, the boss dropped a Volganon, which is a very strong uh, magic. And, and yeah, just the drops from the thieves and everything. So I wanted to store a lot of things and get into this convoy was uh, more easily doable than get into this one. So I thought, okay, I take the chest and I also bring the units that uh, want to drop something and get my inventories clean. But this paladin was actually important, he had a name. Uh, didn't really have like any boss quote or anything, but he did drop another important item that I'm going to write here. The paladin's honor. Now I, I wasn't familiar with the concept of paladin's honor, because it's an item I have never seen before, but Due to the name, I could more or less guess that it was a Night Crest. And a Night Crest is a promotion item for armors and cavaliers. Funnily enough, I just searched after this, and in this game, knights don't promote. There's knights, there's generals, but the knights don't promote into generals. So that's why it's not called Knight's Crest, but just Paladin's Honor, because the only use it has is for someone to become a Paladin. Uh, I'm not a stupid. I know Abel is one of my best units, so I obviously used it on Abel. And that basically means that I had three promotions happen on this map, and you missed all of them because of me losing the recording. Abel, Gordon, and Ohma. Able turn into a paladin, Gordon turn into a. This is important. This is big. Uh, Able turn into a paladin, Gordon turn into a sniper, and Ohma turn into a into a hero. Promotion for Ohma. 
and for Abel was pretty disappointing, but for Gordon it was incredible, like he got up to uh, 12 or 14 speed, and I thought like, what the hell is this, like are there, are the bonuses for snipers so good, because you know, they, they are aware that it's not that good a class, or I don't really get why this is happening. Actually, everyone doesn't have a, you know, direct bonus system like in the GBA games. It works like promotions doing Gaiden and in, in Echoes too. Instead of giving you a fixed boost, you catch up to the basis of the promoted class. And apparently, snipers have very, very, very good base speed. So that meant Gordon caught up to the base speed of a sniper, which is very high uh, from his pathetic like 5-6 speed. So now Gordon is suddenly able to do more damage, almost always double and yeah. He's become quite a unit. To be honest, I, I can now rely on Gordon uh, quite a lot, which is uh, scary to think about. I of course understand that Gordon has his disadvantages, you know, you have to train him. Uh, right now he seems slightly stronger than George, but George basically doesn't need any input at all to become good, so... Uh, please, Mecha, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I know, I know, it's a pitfall and all that, but man, is he entertaining to use. And yeah, after that I took care of the last uh, group of enemies, I got their drop, I promoted everyone I needed to, that meant the whole map was clean and I just had to take that throne in here. So while my people were storing things on the combo, I just went on the throne and took it. I know the concept for the map might seem pretty simple, maybe the, the way I played it was simpler than the previous, to be honest. But I, I feel like this was an important map because it was the main castle of Arcania. When we retook it, it felt like we had accomplished one of the main points of the plot. And for me to have lost this recording is actually yeah, something I don't really enjoy. But that's how things go. That's how things go. So yeah, uh, I'm going to leave you here with the outro for the story and next time we'll be back to our regular schedule with you know actual gameplay happening instead of me scribbling over game also in case you care uh, i moved houses so that's why this video was you know had like a week uh, you had to wait a week between the previous one and this one You have my gratitude, Prince. It is all thanks to you that I was able to return to my home. This shining bow is called Parthia. It is one of the weapons passed down by the royal family. Our enemies... Wait, 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 do you give me Parthia? Our enemies have stolen the gr Lance Gratibu and the Sword Mercurius. If you can obtain these uh, weapons, their great power will make your fight that much easier. I feel like this is like the silver sword that I got. It's probably going to be on Marth's inventory. Which means... I can trade it to Gordon. I'm probably going to store it. Okay, okay, that was the end of a, of a very, very enjoyable chapter. Um, I was complaining about inventory handling and this chapter was all about inventory handling and I, I really had a lot of fun with it. Because, yeah, we got a lot of items and it looks like I'm getting ready to tackle the, the rest of the game with with strength. So, yeah. I don't know. I think the I think the map design in this one was pretty okay. Rescuing the units that I didn't use at all and I'm not planning to use. That was fine too. If I get an extra deploy, then maybe I will use that girl, uh, Media media because she seemed to be interesting but aside from that I'm, I don't have a big interest so why why would I when I have 
pretty powerful units that I've been carrying from the beginning. And of course, uh, the highlight of this map was obviously the promotion of my strongest unit, Gordon, and also Able. Well, and yeah, very good, very good. So yeah, that's going to do it for this part. This has been Pomum. If you liked, then consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.